Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is my match preview for England versus Wales with our Tottenham Hotspur players in mind. Now obviously in the first game in the Euros for England, they drew one all with Russia. Wales got a sneak but very well played 2-1 victory over Slovakia, which makes this a far more important game for England, I'd say, than Wales. Wales will definitely be very happy with a draw. My personal opinion is, if England get a draw, I still think they could top the group because potentially at this time when it's being filmed, um, Russia plays Slovakia on Wednesday and then it's the Wales versus England game on Thursday. And I just think maybe a draw for England would mean we just have to go and beat Slovakia by more than Wales did to top the group. But who knows? Doesn't really matter. More importantly, this is my match preview, so I'm going to tell you what I think. My score prediction, first up, score prediction. I'm going for 2-0 England. Let me talk you through why that is. I think it's going to be like a Premier League derby. I think it's going to be high tempo, low technical ability a lot of the time, not that much skill going around, bit of, you know, cut and thrust. And when it comes to it, I just think England have got more players who have a better level of fitness uh, games played under their belt, not just internationally, but also in terms of this season. And I think quality will shine through. Uh, basically, I feel like if England can keep Gareth Bale and Aaron Ramsey quiet, it's highly likely that we'll keep a clean sheet and I can just score us not, uh, see us notching one. Uh, if we can get an early goal, I think that'll change Wales' game plan. They're going to play a 5-3-2. They'll have to come out more at us and that will enable us to have even more space in the wide areas where Danny Rose and Kyle Walker can take advantage of the fact they're only playing wing backs with potentially, probably Raheem Sterling and Adam Lallana in front of them kind of doubling up. So that's why I've gone for 2-0. In terms of my lineup, the team that I think will play, I actually think Roy Hodgson will be loyal and stick with the same team because England did play well against Russia. For that. So that's Joe Hart, Kyle Walker, Gary Cahill, Chris Smalling and Danny Rose, Eric Dyer and Wayne Rooney, Deli Alley. Uh, Adam Lallana, Raheem Sterling and Harry Kane. However, if it were up to me, and it's not, uh, if it were, uh, and I mentioned this in yesterday's Spurverts or Spurverts on Tuesday, sorry, uh, I would actually play Harry Kane in a bit more of a withdrawn role, take out Raheem Sterling, play Delhi on the left of the three behind the front man and bring Jamie Vardy on. But I don't think he will do that in which case I think Hodgson will stick to the same team and hopefully Vardy will come on with 20, 30 minutes to go when the Welsh defence is tiring and the game is getting opened up. Uh, talk about a couple of players in the opposition that we obviously have to look up to, uh, look out for. Uh, Gareth Bale goes without saying, I'll mention him a bit more in a second, but Ben Davis, uh, obviously our Spurs left back, uh, isn't playing left wing back for them. Like I mentioned, Chris Coleman's playing a 5-3-2. Ben Davis plays on the left side of the three centre backs. And in their opening game against Slovakia, he made a game-saving uh, challenge uh, clearance off the line uh, very early on in the game. And that would have made things incredibly hard for Wales in terms of pressure because Slovakia could have just sat back. It was really amazing reading of the game and a great clearance. So Ben Davis will be so up for it playing against, you know, probably five Spurs players uh, and he will be bang up for this one, so it'll be interesting to see how he does. Second one to look out for, of course, Gareth Bale, the greatest player I've ever seen play for Spurs in the flesh, uh, and he is just the main man for Wales. They're pretty open about it. Chris Coleman's almost Harry Redknapp-like in how open he is about, he tells his team, just get it to Gareth. Gareth Bale will be on every set piece, He'll be on, uh, you know, pens if they get pens. And their whole team is geared around giving it to Gareth Bale. He plays the 5-3-2 so that Bale is the spare man and can just roam. And we've just got to keep it tight. And if there's one man who I think should stay near him at all times, it's Eric Dyer. And I think he will relish that challenge. Of course, he won't be able to match him for pace. But if he doesn't give Gareth Bale any space, Bale will start getting frustrated. Don't be surprised if you start to see a few dives left, right and centre from Gareth Bale. You know, he was doing it back at Spurs, let alone the extra he will have learnt since he's been at Real Madrid. So it'd be interesting to see how the referee deals with that one. But for my money, if Eric Dyer keeps Gareth Bale quiet, easy win for England, 2-0 probably. A uh, little stat I wanted to talk to you uh, about in terms of England versus Wales games. They've played each other 86 times. There have been 66 wins for England. That's a massive amount. That is really showing that history is on our side. There have been uh, only 14 defeats for England. I think the last one came in 1984 and 21 draws. I think an England win here could really get the motivation behind this side going. I think we're all happy with the performance they put in against Russia. Let's hope they can put it on again, win the game, and then we can go into the Slovakia game full of confidence 
and really think about this attacking, driven, hungry, young English side full of Spurs players going quite far into this tournament and offering us some hope to the future of our country's football. Finally, a memory of England versus Wales. This came from the 26th of March 2011, so that's five years ago. This really shocked me, okay? England won 2-0 at the Millennium Stadium. Uh, Frank Lampard and Darren Bent with the goals, uh, almost unbelievably. But this is the thing that really shocked me. The midfield three that day was Scott Parker, Frank Lampard and Jack Wilshire. Five years ago he was playing for England and yet he's still only played just over 100 games in all for Arsenal despite being playing for them for over 10 years and England for five years. He really is unbelievably injury prone but if we can get him on the pitch, it's hard for me to say as a Spurs fan, if we can get him on the pitch for England in the right position, in the right formation, he has scored some wonderful goals for England. The two he scored against Estonia in the qualifying really were amazing. Top corner, uh, both of them. Should say also, uh, in that game against Wales, Michael Dawson, our ex-captain Courageous, was on the pitch. He got a few England caps whilst he was Spurs too. I miss him. Good lad. In the end, it was probably the right time for him to leave, although we didn't know at the time he was going to be replaced by Federico Fazio. But still miss him and glad he's got promotion with Hull City. It'll be good to see him back in the Prem next season and at the lane hopefully anyway guys that's been my match preview for the england versus wales game let me know what you think about it in the comment section below let us know what you think the scores will be and who will score don't forget to subscribe to spurred on on youtube and on facebook and twitter just look for us spurred on tv and keep supporting the boys in the euros and of course eric lamella over there in the copper america come on you spurs this is Spurverts, or maybe just for the day, Spurvert, the show where we talk about all the things that get us excited to be Spurs fans, 